Hello and welcome to this episode of Monster Model Review. Now we're going to be doing something a little different this episode. Uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, Rob and I were doing our own modeling show on public access. Uh, we've kind of discontinued doing that, but what we're going to do for you is uh, take some excerpts out of some of our episodes just to show you what we did. And in this episode, what I'll be redo- doing is building a cobblestone base for my Horizon Dracula. I'm going to show you how to make a simple cobblestone base for your figure. This will work for Frankenstein or whoever, uh, but before we get to it, I'm going to go over the materials we're going to need to do this project. The materials we're going to need for uh, the cobblestone project is uh, Super Sculpey. You could also use epoxy putty, but uh, I like Sculpey because it does not, uh, won't dry out on you. But the bad thing is, is it does have to be cooked. And you're also going to need some kind of base to put it upon, whether it's a wooden base or, or here we have a resin base, which this is what I'm going to be using. Um, because when, it, when the Sculpey bakes, it's still a little brittle, so we need, we need that hard support. Then you're going to need a, some sculpting tools because we're going to need to sculpt in the mortar on the rocks. And then you're going to need a heat gun to cure the Sculpey. Uh, you could also cook the Sculpey in an oven. But the bad thing is, is you can't cook in an oven you eat off because it gives off, uh, it gives off uh, fumes that are, that are toxic. So we'll just be using a heat gun to cure this, this base today. All right, now that we've gone through the materials, what we're going to need to build our cobblestone base, um, the first thing you need to do is take your Sculpey and put it in little balls. And you just make a bunch of these different sizes. And what you're going to want to do is take them onto your base here and just press them down with your finger. Now, how big you get it is your choice, but you have to make sure that they, they join together because when we blend this together with, uh, with our tool, we need to make a mortar line in there. So we're just going to go ahead and just keep pressing these in here until we get the base full. All right, now that we've uh, laid out our stones, uh, what we have to do now is we have to take our sculpting tool. Um, anything will work, pretty much. Uh, there's dental tools and uh, picks and everything. And what we need to do is, uh, I'm going to be using like a half spoon, and this is a little pick on the end. We have to create the mortar in between the rocks, because obviously they, I don't know, cemented them back together in those days. So we have to create the mortar in there and all we're going to do is we're going to take this tool and we're going to come in like this and we're just going to push it in to create the look of the mortar now it's it's okay if you don't uh, get it right away it takes a little bit but all you want to do is use this to connect the rocks together Alright, so that finishes off uh, pushing, you know, doing the rock detail and filling in the mortar. What we want to do now is uh, take a little aluminum foil here. We'll just rip off a little piece. Um, you can do this. You don't have to do it. But what you want to do is uh, just, just to add a little texture to it is just roll it up. Don't roll it up too overly tight. And just make sure that it's got some uh, indentations and everything in it. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to take it and just kind of roll it over the, the Sculpey a little bit just to put some uh, dents and creases into the rocks. Just to add a little texture to them. As you can see here, we got a little, uh, you can see how the aluminum foil bit into the rock to add a little texture to it. Uh, you, w- you wouldn't have to do this if you didn't want to. If you want the rocks to be a little smoother, that's fine. Now, the thing about Sculpey, as I said when I was introducing the materials to you, is that uh, One of the advantages is you have an unlimited uh, amount of working time with it. Whereas if we were to use like a 20 minute epoxy or uh, putty or even AVs or magic sculpt, you only have so much time to work with it Uh, because those will harden by themselves with the catalyst, whereas the Sculpey needs to be heated. Now that's its downfall. Um, You can cook this in the oven. 
I wouldn't recommend it unless you're doing something really big. The other, your other option is to use a heat gun. And uh, this is just an embossing gun. There are uh, hotter or bigger guns, industrial size, I guess you could say, at Menards that you could buy. But I find that this gun works fine for the little bit that I need to heat uh, the Sculpey with. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to cook up the Sculpey a little bit. All right, when heating this, you want to keep the gun in movement all the time. Um, don't concentrate too uh, long on one spot because uh, the Sculpey will burn. Um, with the gun, it's kind of kind of iffy how long you want to do it. Um, usually I do it in spurts, probably five minutes at a time. And then I do that about three or four times. And I find that for this thickness, it, it, uh, it definitely hardens it up enough. Okay, now that we've gone ahead and let our Sculpey cool down so it hardens, I went ahead and I primed the base uh, with a dark gray. And now what we're going to do is we're going to paint our base. Um, stone effects are kind of fun because you got so many different possibilities. And with a cobblestone, I would imagine being on the ground, it gets a lot of dirt and mildew and moss and all that good stuff. So instead of just, you know, spray painting it black and just dry brushing some grays on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sponge and I'm going to use an array of colors. I've got a, a, a Boston fern, a, I believe that's burnt umber, this is a gray and this is a black. And I'm going to take the sponge and just sponge on these colors. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us a, a, a different array of colors, a, a broken up pattern, because that's the nice thing about a sponge. It's, it's got different textures to it, and that's just going to add a lot more to our, uh, our effect on painting. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the Freak Flex Graystone Gray, or Tombstone Gray, pardon me. This is a little bit, little bit of a kind of a darker greenish gray. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and just start, just start tapping on it. Right, that's probably enough of the, of the tombstone gray. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little black. And what I like to do when I'm sponging is I like to work in between darks and lights because you get a lot better contrast. And uh, make sure you pat off a lot of paint. This is kind of like, like when you dry brush. You don't, don't want uh, a lot of paint on there. And just come in light handed. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to move, move the sponge around a little bit. I'm going to take a green. This is another color. We don't really want to get too heavy handed with this green, so we're going to try to take as much of the paint off the sponge as we can. All right, and now I'm going to come in with a burnt umber. As you can see here, this really, really gives it a, the stones a dirty look like they've been walked upon and got a little mileage on it. All right, and now to tie all the colors together a little more, I'm going to come back to the tombstone gray and I'm going to just try to blend these all together now. Um, the one thing that's really nice about the base for this figure is, is how compact it is because as we find out nowadays there's a lot of models to choose from and they're taking up a lot of space um, and something like this where it's small and simple help, it helps accentuate the base but not overpower the figure or your shelf. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Monster Model Review. I hope you enjoyed a little glimpse into what Rob and I used to do on our TV show. In future episodes of Monster Model Review, we'll probably be doing some more excerpts from the show. So uh, if you've got any comments or questions, you can contact us on the web at monstermodelreview.com.